Okay, so where we last left off, we had generated a lot of our necessary files and also pulled some stuff from the Bootstrap theme uh, to start generating our custom template off of that. Um, so now what we're going to need to do is start building out our functions.php file. Um, so the first thing we're, we're going to have to do is, well, I want you to take notice of the links here. This is the way you would do it in a standard um, HTML file or, you know, uh, standard website, you know, that's not using a content management system like WordPress. Um, in WordPress, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, this is just going to help manage everything better, um, make sure that things load in the proper order and all that stuff. And it, it kind of just unifies where it all belongs. So to do that, we're going to go into this file. We're going to need to start a PHP document. Um, so there we go. And we'll just create some space here. All right, so the first thing is we're going to create a function and try to spell it correctly. There we go. Um, now, a good rule of thumb is to just uh, prefix all of your functions with a special set of characters that kind of prevent it from ever having any conflict with plugins later down the line. Um, so for this one, we'll just do bootstrap to WordPress, and that will make sure that all of these don't conflict with anything later. And for this one, we're going to call theme style. All right, so there's the beginning of our function. So what's going to go in here is we're basically going to build out a way that WordPress in its back end can churn out all those link tags for us. And the way that we would do that is that we're just going to go in here and call WP and Q. Oops. WP and Q script. Uh, no, rather style. WP and Q style. So, um, you know, if you have Sublime, it gives you some helper stuff, um, but we're not going to use any of that. Um, so here, we're just going to have to name each file. So now, just to kind of make all this a bit easier, I'm just going to go to a two column layout here, a two row layout, uh, and go ahead and pull down our header. Uh, this way we can kind of see what we need first and, and where. So the first one is going to be the bootstrap. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and call this boot strap CSS. And then we're going to go ahead and call get template directory URI. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and concatenate onto that um, the ending URL structure. So just to get an idea of what get template directory URI gives us, it gives us the file path um, where we set our our template. So in this case, it would be w you know the root directory wp content uh, themes and then Bootstrap to WordPress. So that's going to generate for us with this little strip of code here, and that kind of ensures that if we ever switch you know switch that around, it'll still give us the correct path, so we don't have to go in and change anything. Um, so for this one, we've got that file in the CSS uh, and then inside that we are using the minified version so the one thing to note is because this generates the URL it doesn't generate that that forward slash so you need to add that and then there we go so that's all you need there um, and that's the only thing inside of our CSS that we're going to use uh, the font awesome like I said we're going to use a content delivery network for that but uh, you know we'll get to you know that a little bit later. The Google Fonts I tend to leave these this way anyways, and then this we're gonna need to go ahead and call our style. So WP, 
actually uh, just copy and paste. Copying and pasting is your friend anytime you're coding. Okay, so from there, we're going to call this one style. Um, all of those are going to need to be named something different, but they all have to have kind of a unique name. So just kind of name it generally after uh, whatever it is that the CSS file has in it. And I got an email. All right, so there's that. And so those are our two CSS fo folders or files rather. Um, now what we need to call is add action. And this is going to take two parameters. So the first one is going to be WP and Q scripts this time. And we don't need any of these trailing stuff. And then the second parameter is whatever we named our function. So good thing to just go up here and copy and paste this and then paste that down there. All right, so that's all set up now. Um, so now the next one that we need to do is, don't forget your semicolons. Um, the next thing to do is the JavaScript. Um, obviously there was a lot more in that one. So create another function. This one, you know, we'll start it off with that same B2W. Uh, but we'll just name it a little bit different. We'll just call it theme JS. All right, so now for this one, uh, we're going to need WP and Q script. Uh, so we'll just call it WP and Q scripts, but we'll erase the T there. Open up the semicolon or the colon, uh, parenthesis. All right, so now same principle here, except that we're going to need to go ahead and get the footer uh, because that's where all of your JavaScript is kept. So here we've got jQuery. Now that's your first one. So we don't need to worry about jQuery because uh, Bootstrap will, or Bootstrap, uh, WordPress will generate that for us. Um, the next one, Bootstrap min.js, we will. Go ahead and just use this. You, you can get a, a CDN for Bootstrap, but for for this case, we'll just go ahead and um, add it. Um, sometimes it's good to just go ahead and add it anyways because it tends to, um, as boot, new Bootstrap uh, versions come out, it can change things and mess up your CSS down the line. So, um, so for this one, we will call it. Bootstrap JS. All right, now same thing, get template directory URI. So same thing is up here. Same thing with the concatenate. All right, and then except this file, we'll just go ahead and copy and paste this down here and paste this into here. All right, so we've got a few more here. All right, so there you go. These are, there's six here. One good rule of thumb with JavaScript because they can be um, linked to in several, excuse me, uh, they can be linked to in several different places. So uh, go ahead and take a look at this and just make sure that we have all the files that we should have. And it looks like there's just a, a bunch of different ones that are minified. Um, so, and then jQuery, which we don't need. Now, I went ahead and added all of these, but there is one extra bit that we're gonna need to add. And so if whatever file that we're putting into here requires jQuery, we're gonna need to go ahead and call array jQuery. and then just set um, the next variable to a blank quotes, and then true. So basically what this is gonna do is make sure that whatever, because like I said, um, 
WordPress will generate jQuery links for us. It's already built into WordPress. So we don't need to add it in a file. Um, so these variables here are just going to say, OK, this needs jQuery to function. So go ahead and call jQuery before any of these. Um, and since I don't really feel like looking through each of the files, I'm just going to set that to true on all of them. This generally is OK to do. But if you do have any issues down the line, um, you might need to go back and change some of that. But um, I haven't run into that really. So, all right. So go ahead and save that file out. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> we need the last piece here. Is just going to be same thing as the bottom one. So add action, and then the same two types of parameters. In fact, I think they're, yeah, it's the exact same. Don't worry about that thing down there. And then we just need the uh, name of this. All right, so now the actions are set up. So how do we go ahead and start utilizing this code that we set up? So up in here, wherever we've got um, the CSS code, uh, you know these are our calls to actual URLs. Um, this is going to be so don't worry about that. But um, I'll take that. I actually leave it in there so I remember. Um, but here and here. We're going to need to generate those files, which are just these two up here. So the way that we do that is go ahead and add a PHP tag inside this file. And then we're just going to call WP head. Now what that does is it goes ahead and calls these files right here, along with anything else that WordPress is going to generate. Um, so there'll be a lot more than these two when you if you actually like viewed the source on the you know generated page, but uh, that's how you go ahead and call all that stuff. So you're gonna need that right there, um, or I generally just put it wherever the CSS files that I generated. It's gonna generate whatever after it, uh, but every WordPress theme is gonna need that, um, regardless of how you set up your CSS or anything. So uh, so here, uh, generally, I just comment this stuff out. OK, so comment it out, all that stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and call another PHP tag, and then just say WP footer. All right, so that's how you generate the stuff that would need to go in the footer. Um, basically your JavaScript and that's all we really need to do for that now let's go ahead and do another thing here and start out so how do you get the footer and the header to load on your index page that's the next step so call another PHP tag and then you're gonna need to go ahead and call two two different uh, WordPress built-in functions. First one for the header is get header. And then down here at the bottom, we'll create another PHP and call get footer. Now that's going to call this footer template to, to start loading wherever this is called. So. That's why you have it at the very bottom and the very top. Um, so at the very top, we have all this code. And at the very bottom, we have all this, just like how it was originally in the downloaded theme folders or theme file. Um, OK, so now that we're at this stage, um, we're going to go ahead and just save everything. Um, now is a good time to go ahead and take a look at maybe what we're getting. I might not be exactly what we want, but 
uh, we can at least take a look and give it a second. All right, so first thing you're going to notice is something's amiss. It's not using any of our files. Uh, that's because we need to go into the admin area. So the reason that we're not seeing the theme that we created is because we need to go to appearance. Um, when you click appearance, you'll see that this is the current active theme. This is our custom theme here. And so we'll just go ahead and activate it. All right, now that theme is active. We'll hit refresh. And there we go. So obviously there's some issues. Um, we've got pretty close to what we had from those main files, but we're not getting everything. Um, but I feel like, because that video took forever, um, this is probably a good stopping point. And the next video we'll get into starting generating this, this stuff from the admin menu. Um, rather than having to go into the HTML code. All right, thanks for watching, and the next video will be pretty soon because I did not make videos for a while, so I'm trying to make up for that. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.